So, hey everybody on VidMe, sorry for the lower, I guess, quality in 1080. I'm also doing this as a stream today, and I'm going to start doing some more content like this. It's going to be both a stream live and um, and as content that goes up on VidMe, YouTube, whatever. And the thing is, uh, about that is going to be, um, I'm going to have it more planned, more scheduled, so people can come out and watch. Uh, on these tutorials and stuff, but this one's simple today. I'm just going to show you how to run some uh, emulators on your PC. Regardless of the legality or whatnot uh, of all this, you know, we can get into that debate some other time. But the truth is, is um, retro game collecting is getting just, I hate that term game collecting. It just used to be buy, would buy retro games because you enjoyed them. And it's getting way too expensive for the average, con average consumer out there. And there is kind of some solutions like the SNES Classic, but the problem with that is, is they're almost being sold like a collectible item. There's not enough of them out there. So with that in mind, what we're going to do today is a lot of you probably have just like laptops or you know, Windows laptops or something like that. We're going to show you how to install RetroArch on here. And then later at a later date, I'm going to show you how to do it on your phone and use a Bluetooth controller. But for today, we're going to do it on PC. So as you can see, we have my desktop here. So first thing you want to do is open a new tab or in my case, or Chrome just in general. I have tabs because I'm streaming at the same time. And you want to look up RetroArch. And first thing right there, download. Okay, so as you can see, it's available for Linux, Windows. It even has a Windows XP installer going back to Windows 98. So if you have some really old hardware that you want to play some games, you're obviously not going to play PS2 probably on either one of these. But uh, PlayStation 1, most definitely on XP. I don't know about Windows ME, any software. If you're running a Windows ME or 98, it's very unlikely. But Super Nintendo and stuff, sure. Um, so we have a few options here. We have Linux, we have Windows, this. There's apparently a web browser version now, uh, Android and other things. And so what we're gonna do though, is just straight up, and I didn't even know there was PS3. Wow, that's just insane. So I'd actually like to go into some of these and look at them sometime. Ros Raspberry Pi I knew of. Oh, anyways, interesting. We're just gonna do the Windows one. So first thing when you have down here is the download and the installer. Um, the download is pretty easy. It comes zipped uh, in the folder that it would normally be. This is how we used to do it. You just unzip it and put the entire folder where you want it. The installer is a little bit more um, straightforward, but I'll show you guys how to handle that. So we're gonna go ahead and download the installer. It's gonna take it a minute. But this will allow you to play your ROMs and stuff like that however you want. Okay, so you can just click on this or open it in your downloads to open the installer. You don't need this anymore. And just like any other installer, next, you have to agree to it. Uh, one thing I do change, they have it set up by default to go into your user's profile. I would just, for me, it's easier just to dump it directly into the C drive. So that's what we're going to do. You can install the DirectX 9 runtime. And you're just going to go ahead and do that to save. It typically takes a little while to do that. Do I want to install DirectX 9? Go for it. Should be in there already, but... Now, when you get to this part where it asks you to install DirectX, one thing I want you guys to make sure of is right here. That was weird. Uh, when you click Next, it's going to try to install the Bing bar to Chrome or whatever you're using. You don't want it. It's just a search engine crap. Just click that. It makes me mad that they put that in the tools now. It's just kind of a low, low point with Microsoft, if you ask me. All right. And so here we are, we have Run RetroArch. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click No on that. And it even gives you, or it doesn't give you a shortcut. Well, that wasn't there before, was it? I wasn't paying attention. But if you need a shortcut, you can click here to wherever you put it. I put it in my C folder, for instance, RetroArch. And if you scroll down here, you'll see the EXE right there. You can just right click, do create shortcut, and that'll make it so it works on your, you know, you can just launch it from your desktop. 
The other nice thing is if you happen to have a Steam link, and this is just kind of an insider tip here, but if you have a Steam link and you click or you have Steam, you can add app, non-game, go through, add it to Steam, and then you can actually stream this to your uh, Steam link in your living room. Alright, so the next thing we need is a controller. So, there's all different types of controllers, but if you're using something X input, like a Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller, that works fine. For this instance, I'm just going to plug my Steam controller receiver. I'm going to plug in the Xbox One controller. Steam controller works too, uh, especially if you, but you have to go into Steam, add it as an uh, app, and then go in and say, you know, um, hey, you know, uh, emulate an Xbox controller, start the app through Steam, and then it works that way. Um, it won't work without Steam. You have to launch it through Steam for the Steam controller to work, if that makes any sense. But on regular Windows, with an Xbox controller, you don't. All right, so here's RetroArch. First thing I do, and as you can see, there's two ways you can navigate this. You can navigate this with the arrow keys, enter, and backspace. If you hit escape, it's gonna close the program. Now, I know sometimes, like, some people, some menus wanna hit escape and then have the thing actually uh, go back, but, and it does that in a lot of games and stuff too. But for RetroArch, it closes it, so it's a little confusing. So let's go ahead and restart it. And next thing we're gonna do here, is, the first thing I do is I, I put it full screen. So uh, I go into video, and there's a toggle switch here, use full screen mode. <clears throat> and that's gonna put it in full screen mode. Okay, cool, the capture picked it up. All right, so why in full screen mode there's a few things we can do here now the cool thing is on older versions they didn't have the xbox controller pre-configured so on the newer versions they actually do so they go forward is a back is b just like you would expect on a other video game d-pad moves up and down and yes this is very much like a playstation 3 um what are they, they called it xmb cross media bar i think so First thing we have to do is configure it so we can actually put games on it. So there's two ways about this. You can actually go ahead and load up your ROMs first, or you can go ahead and download the cores to the stuff that you know you're gonna use. We're gonna go ahead and download the cores first. So what we need to go to is online updater, core updater. As you can see here, this is basically all the emulators that you could ever want, all the different versions of MAME, Atari 2600, all that. So we're gonna do NES Genesis, and Super Nintendo. So we need to go to NES Famicom. And I like FCEM, or uh, Nestopia is actually pretty cool. But I think we're gonna try this one. I haven't tried this core before. And it says it's downloading in the corner and that's it. That core or that emulator is added. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And you can see they actually have like 3DS. Uh, I don't know how well that works. They do have regular Nintendo DS. And as far as I know, Nintendo DS works better. Um, I probably wouldn't want to play with it with a touch screen though. Okay, so we're gonna go SNES, and for this I typically do SNES 9X 2010, or I don't think I've tried a regular version, we'll see what the difference is. This is strange to me if they have one just for Tomb Raider, but short or whatever. And let's see, did I pass up Sega? Yeah, Sega Genesis. This is the one that typically most people use is Genesis Plus because it works on Mega Drive, CD, Game Gear, all that stuff. So we're just gonna go ahead and download that. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and load my ROMs. So to do that, I have to put my ROMs on my PC. All right, so now that we have the hard drive hooked up, mine just auto came on. Um, emulation ROMs, game ROMs, and I just want these three here. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and, in my case, click, right click and copy. We'll go back to the C drive, we'll go to RetroArch, and I'll just right click and make a new folder, just called ROMs. And then we'll click in that and right click and paste. 
And that's gonna quickly go ahead and install all my ROM folders into, uh, or all my ROM files into my ROM folder and their particular folders for NES, Super Nintendo, all this stuff. Anyways, okay, we're gonna open RetroArch back up. And what we need to do now is find those files because you can see it's not doing anything here. So we can scan directory and it's gonna scan everything on your, or scan a file. Um, and you can straight up just do it a hard drive. It will take it a while because it will go through every file on that particular drive. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to, and this is the reason I put Retro Arch in the, uh, just straight up in the C because it makes it, it's right there on the base directory. It makes it much easier to find. So we're gonna go ahead there. We're gonna go down to ROMs. And it's just structured like you put it on your machine. Uh, did I put GameCube on there? Oh well. I missed the Super Nintendo. I'll have to load that here in a second. But we'll just go ahead and do Nintendo and ditch the GameCube stuff. So when you click on this, you can do scan this directory. And it's gonna go through and find all the particular ROM files that are in that directory. You can see down there on the bottom. Actually, you guys probably can't see. So what we'll do is we'll get rid of BitBoss for right now. You can see it's going through all the files right now. And that's it. We've scanned that directory. We'll do the same for the Sega Genesis. Scan this directory. And you can see it's pretty relatively quick. All right, there we go. Now, let's see. Back on the way out. Now you can see we have a Nintendo icon for the original Nintendo and a Genesis icon. Now we can go in here and we can launch the games by clicking on the cartridge. We'll just do 1942 real quick, hitting run, and then we have to select what core or emulator we're using. So we're selecting that and we have to hit run again. And it's gonna start it right up. I don't know if this will capture on the monitor. Says paused. Hmm. There it goes. And you can see there's the emulator running. I forgot one thing now that I do like to do. So we have it running. Uh, one thing I did forget though is in input, if you want to make life a little bit easier when you're on a controller. <clears throat> oh, where is it? Menu toggle. Now what I tend to do is start and select at the same time, which is these two buttons. And then say, for instance, we go in 1942 and I hit those both at the same time. It goes back to the emulator and I can click on resume and it goes back into it. Now, another thing you can do that I tend to do a lot is I don't like bilinear filtering. It does make the image smoother, but I turn it off. I like my pixels crisp. So if I go back into the game, you can see the pixels are much more crisp. Then you can also just, this is like all your options for your save states and all that fun stuff. And then we can also close the content from there. And it goes back into regular RetroArch. So, there's not much else to cover here, but one thing I want to do real quick to help you guys out that can make it look a little prettier, and I think it'll require restart of RetroArch again, but we'll just go ahead and do that, is we'll go back down to Online Updater. And so I don't blow your guys' ears out next time. I'll turn that down. And there's a thing of thumbnails updater right here. So we'll go to that. And this sometimes takes a while. I'm gonna do the Genesis one because I don't remember it taking as long as the Nintendo one takes forever in a day. So we're gonna go to Sega, uh, Game Gear, Mega Drive. I guess it's Mega Drive, Genesis, yeah, okay. And what this is gonna do is download uh, a zip file from a site that has like all the art for the uh, Genesis games 
And so next time you're launching a retro arch, it should show all the thumbnails. I've had problems with this where it doesn't zip, unzip it right or install it right, so I have to do it again. So we'll see how it goes. This is a relatively new feature. It's been in the last couple updates. And not all games have a scan yet because some games are just really rare and, and nobody has the box art anymore. So when it's extracting, it's going to pause for a second. Hopefully this doesn't kill the stream because it's using up CPU. Okay, we're going to see if it works. And it did. So there you go. As you're going down through, now you have box art for, you know, a good portion of your games. Not everything's being shown there, but a good portion of it. And you can also try, like, this works for, you know, um, uh, the NES 2 as well. We can do the NES real quick. So this is actually going a lot quicker than it has in the past for me. Um, typically, this has been a very slow process, especially the download part. It would, I would just sit here and watch it tick like 1% every minute or so. So it seems like they've speeded up in the latest update, which update, which is nice. And nice for me, because I'm not sitting here taking so long to explain all this. So if we go over here to the NES, we can see the, the thumbnails are now added to most of the NES games. So this makes it very cool, and on I love it for the fact that it's not only a nice user-friendly uh, system, but once you have it set up right, um, you can actually sit down. If you have like a Steam Link or a home theater PC or something, a uh, home theater PC will handle most of this stuff. If, the only other thing I want to cover here is in this instance, we're gonna run 1942 again. It seems to be doing this because I'm uh, the way I'm recording. I have to click on it for it to undo that. It doesn't do that when I normally. Yeah. But for me, I personally like it in raw form. However, if you go in here, you can add, go to video. There we go, video, very bottom, video filter. And here's where all your filters are. You can actually download new filters and add them into the filters folder on RetroArch and get more. For instance, like one of my favorite ones, if I had to use one, is basically what makes it look like a TV. So we have this here's, um, and I like RGB, so I'll use this Blarg RGB filter. And now it gives it kind of like that look where like it has like a CRT where there's like some shadowing and stuff. And this looks much more like what I'm used to. Oh. Such good sound effects in that one. So we're gonna go ahead and go. 1942, close that, go back into it. And then another thing I have to note here, just so you guys know real quick, to get those filters off is still kind of strange. I don't know why they choose this, but there's no option here, as you can see, to just reset it to nothing. So what you have to do is like here, when you have this selected, hit the start button, and then now no filter selected. So I don't know why they chose to do that, but, Anyways, I hope this helps you guys out with uh, RetroArch, and uh, if you have any questions, I'm not going to get into any discussions about the legality of like owning ROMs or anything like that. Uh, Nintendo may try to take my video down on YouTube, but that's why we have VidMe, so. Anyways, uh, any comments, uh, guys, give the video a thumbs up or an upvote if you like this, if this was helpful, if this is something you want to do. And like I said, this actually works pretty well through the Steam Link or streaming through a home theater PC or something like that. But obviously a home theater PC, if you have one of those, is going to run this just fine anyways. So uh, I'll talk to you guys later.